I think the ESG piece, I think we're pretty unique. But um, what I'd say is, as we've been together now for about 18 months, that alignment couldn't be more clear of where why it makes the most sense. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. Welcome to an episode of Strategic Conversations. We host insightful discussions with top business leaders and top thinkers. Thank you for joining us. Today, we are hosting Mr. Jim Apostolides, the Senior VP of Enterprise Operational Excellence for Baker Hughes. Mr. Apostolides will be a speaker at the Houston Strategy Forum's upcoming 11th Annual Supply Chain Symposium. And we're, we're excited to host him. I just had our, our prep meeting. This is, this is going to be a great discussion with him. I am Ravi Kathuria the president of the Houston Strategy Forum and author of the management and leadership book, How Cohesive is Your Company, and author of Happy Soul, Hungry Mind. Strategic conversations are hosted by the Houston Strategy Forum. If you value these conversations, please hit like and subscribe to the Houston Strategy Forum's YouTube channel. Today's episode is sponsored by Cohegic, a management consulting and executive coaching firm. Thank you for joining us again. And we're looking forward to a great discussion with Mr. Apostolidis. Jim, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for, for joining us. We are looking forward to hosting you on February 7 at the Supply Chain Symposium. I'm excited. I, I, I feel we have a connection. We're going to have a great discussion. Yeah, Robbie, look, uh, thanks for the invite. I'm looking forward to, this, looking forward to the session. And uh, likewise, I think that there's going to be a lot of really good positive energy in the room as we talk through it. Yes, Jim, and and I need to I need to learn to pronounce your name better. I, I'll practice it before February seven. <laughs> but you know, and, and uh, uh, I, I have a last name which most people have difficulty saying, so <laughs> I can appreciate what you must be going through. But tell me, tell me about your role at Baker. Uh, you have a very cherished career, very successful career, at Baker. You have been uh, building up your career, and now you're in this very important role. I love the title. Uh, to drive operational excellence. So tell us about it. What does it mean uh, to drive operational excellence in, in a corporation that is that large, that is global with so many teams? What does that represent? Yeah, look, so first of all, it's really comprised of, of three main groups. You know, we have our supply chain center of excellences that we have across the company. We have our HSE or environmental um, uh you know, environmental health and safety group with quality. And then we have our environmental, social and governance, the ESG piece of it, which we also call sustainability. Those are the three main tenants that we have uh, a part of our team. And really our mission is figuring out how we horizontally unlock value across the enterprise yeah. by collaborating across our businesses and other corporate functions and really coming up with innovative solutions to complicated problems to both improve our processes and improve our performance and, and do it in a way that creates value, right? And, um, you know, the biggest cornerstone that I talk about with our team is the collaboration piece, because really understanding all the different stakeholders needs uh, across the company, uh, and then our shareholders, our employees are so critical. And that collaboration is like the oxygen for our organization. And if we don't have that oxygen, then we can't perform. Yes. Yes, no, great point. It's 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 the oxygen. It's the enabler, because you you need that glue to hold the organization together, right? And especially a company like Baker Hughes, these three uh, pillars are so important. And I we talked about this earlier. I, I want to congratulate you on bringing ESG and EHS and supply chain together. Right. I would I would love for you to to talk about that for a minute and, and talk about the logic behind it and the why it makes it for such a powerful combination. Yeah, look, you know, I think this without a doubt, the HSC piece is just intertwined in the operation, the supply chain. That one, I think, is is pretty clear. And a lot of organizations have them together. I think the ESG piece, I think we're pretty unique. But um, what I'd say is, as we've been together now for about 18 months, that alignment 
couldn't be more clear of where why it makes the most sense. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. You know, if I think about it, you know, from a supply chain perspective, the table stakes are, look, how do you drive cost efficiency? How do you make sure you're complying different quality standards across the globe, et cetera? And when I think about sustainability, it's how do you reduce emissions, right? Which in, in this case, it's, it's, it's the emissions is the variable trying to optimize. And then how do you comply with the various rules and regulations that are going to come out uh, in this space? And who's better equipped to really solve both of those problems simultaneously yes. than a group of operational professionals that just go out and solve problems, right? And I think the only difference here is some of the vernacular that we've all learned over you know several years have to be modified a little bit. But that approach of identifying the problem, identifying the variable yes. that you're trying to influence, and then democratizing yes. Yes. the initiative to be able to get a bunch of people involved to move the needle, it's that same concept. And I think that... Um, you know, we've made a, a tremendous amount of uh, progress in our carbon out program, which yes. is our emissions reduction uh, program, where since 2019, we've reduced our emissions by about 28 uh, percent for our baseline year. And, you know, we've got a bunch of change agents together that we have embed had embedded in the organization and said, look, yes. how are we going to solve this thing? And, you know, we kicked off with, look, how do we keep it simple? How do we democratize it? How do we make the measurement system relatively straightforward so somebody that's three or four levels deep can, can really look at how they're doing, but then we can look at it as a company enterprise level as well. And that kind of ecosystem that the team created kind of unlocked yeah. all this enthusiasm that was built up in the organization to drive emissions reduction. And uh, look, I think we're early in the journey, but I think that you know, collaboration between the operational teams and the and the ESG team is so uh, critical, and it's really going to help us unlock a lot of value that we probably wouldn't have unlocked uh, if it wasn't together. Ah, I I I love it because uh, I think you 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 articulated it so beautifully. You know, the the problem could be a different problem. It's a new problem, right? We initially you had the cost and quality issue that supply chain was trying to solve. Now you have the the carbon and emissions problem. But it's the same competency. It's the same uh, best practices. It's is the same doctrines that need to apply. The same right uh, sure. solution set, and then you solve these sets of problems, and then you realize that we can we can do that and bring that and and use the same teams and 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 drive so much value in that. There are companies today who are struggling with where to put ESG in their organizations, where it should drive from. I think they should they should take a page and, and learn from you and how you have done it. I think that's it's it's beautiful on how this is working. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but sir, one quick question before we wrap this short segment up. Uh, really looking forward to seeing you uh, February 7th. But where do you see supply chain and the opportunity that it creates for organizations, right? Uh, as we have come out of the pandemic, we are still having some of the supply chain challenges uh, in in terms of price escalations, in terms of shortages and, and delays. But supply chain can bring so much to the table, you know, from a strategic point of view. How do you see that? Look, I, you know, I think the expectations continue to grow on the supply chain uh, professionals, uh, not only in our organization, across the globe. I think that the, you know, managing the cost, the quality, the HSE, the cash performance uh, and fulfillment for a company is just an expectation, right? And I think that we have probably hit a couple uh, bumps in the road because of some of the uh, residual effects of what's going on from a pandemic perspective and some of the volatility in the globe. But look, I think supply chain can drive a lot of competitive advantage. Let me give you a couple examples. One is, look, the, the businesses, especially large multinationals, are global. Yes. And a lot of, let's say, um, ways to unlock markets is to have some level of localization. Right. Whether it's, you know, professional employees working in a call center or a shared service or it's a manufacturing location or a set of suppliers that's built around that ecosystem. And, you know, if the supply chain professionals are out there saying, look, where do you want to grow? Yeah. What is the market we're trying to win in? What's the price, the cost point for us to be successful? Then the supply chain organization and professionals can come together and say, look, how can we fulfill this localization need, yeah. but have it still be economical? for the company and the customer, right? And, and do it in a way that allows us to, you know, 
still fulfill globally. And I think that, look, those are complicated yeah. things to challenge, but quite frankly, yes. it's fun. Yes. And I think that yes. you come to the table with, hey, look, I think in this specific jurisdiction, we should do only assembly and tests because of this, this, and this. Yeah. I think in this jurisdiction, we can create maybe an, op an option to where we can serve the globe from this place and also have the localization and we should do it like this. And I think that, you know, kind of in the spirit of that kind of ESG discussion is you have a different variable you're trying to solve, but how do you bring that problem solving uh, uh, expertise to the table and create that competitive advantage? And I think that one of the things that, you know, supply chain professionals really need to do is be proactive with that dialogue. Don't wait for the commercial team or the product lines to come yes. to you and say, yes. hey, I need this. I already yes. have a bid. Yes. You know, how do we have the localization? It's yes. how do you anticipate and cultivate the ecosystem yes. before that phone call even comes? Yes. So A, you spend time on the right stuff and B, yes. it's on the stuff that could be the most impactful. And in some cases creates a competitive advantage before you even get to the bid stage. So look, I think there's... Um, you know, localization to me in that global piece is a huge uh, opportunity for, you know, supply chain professionals to create that competitiveness uh, that can differentiate uh, a company. Wow. I, 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 I need to applaud you because you're absolutely right. Supply chain has to think and position themselves as solution leaders, yeah. right? Not solution followers. They need to become solution leaders. And, and it, it fits perfectly with your title of operational excellence, suddenly supply chain is not something that is back office. It is leading operational excellence. I love that. I, Jim, I cannot wait to host you on February 7th. I think you're already ready. <laughs> we, could have, we could have walked right into our <laughs> symposium on February 7th. We're, we're ready. We could have taken this discussion. But I, I want to invite everybody who's listening to this video, please come join us on February 7th. Spend some time with this brilliant man and understand how he thinks, how he's looking at supply chain, how he's looking at operational excellence, how he's bringing together ESG and supply chain and EHS. I, I think this is this is beautiful, something that your company will appreciate. And you could go back and look at your organization structure. Please join us February 7th at the Supply Chain Symposium. We're looking forward to hosting Jim. Jim, thank you so much for being part of it. We're excited, sir. I'm excited too, Ravi. I look forward to seeing you on February 7th and all of you as well. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.